Good afternoon, Dr. John Jurich in Louisville, Kentucky. I am the medical director of HPS Kentucky, which is a HIFU treatment center of excellence. I wish to speak today uh, about the use of high intensity focused ultrasound in a salvage setting, a uh, procedure that can be offered to certain patients who have had uh, an initial uh, primary treatment, most commonly with uh, IMRT radiation therapy, who have shown recurrent disease or a uh, persistent or relapsing disease. Uh, I'd like to say, first of all, that this is a difficult subset of patients. Uh, as all of us know, uh, in the uh, treatment of the prostate cancer patient, a patient who fails an initial modality of treatment is, uh, by definition, uh, falling into a higher risk of prostate cancer disease. And the same is true for this subset of patients that I see in my practice uh, who are being considered for salvage HIFU therapy. And first and foremost, it's important to have uh, reasonable uh, expectations and reasonable objectives for uh, offering uh, this treatment to men who have uh, recurrent uh, radio-resistant prostate cancer. Uh, first of all, ideally, we would like to cure these patients, particularly if we can define them as having uh, only a local recurrence. But as we'll see from slides upcoming, this certainly has not uh, always been uh, an attainable objective. So we have to look at other uh, objectives that are also in the patient's best interest and are appropriate uh, for considering HIFU therapy in a salvage modality. Obviously, the delay of progression to uh, metastatic or extraprostatic disease is a, a very valid objection, uh, objective rather. And also uh, being able to delay or avoid uh, either intermittent or long-term androgen deprivation therapy uh, can certainly be uh, a very worthwhile uh, objective, particularly as we find more and more evidence that long-term androgen deprivation therapy has uh, numerous uh, disadvantages uh, for patients, both in uh, general physiology, uh, associated uh, morbidity and quality of life issues. Um, and in addition, uh, we'd like to be able to avoid some of the consequences of progressive local disease, uh, primarily uh, ureteral obstruction from progressive prostate cancer, as well as uh, urinary retention and other irritative symptoms that might be occurring. And finally, uh, we certainly are well familiar with uh, other uh, local options, primarily salvage prostatectomy and the uh, significant associated morbidity that oftentimes can go with this treatment as a salvage option. Um, by definition, patients who have recurrent prostate carcinoma after radiation therapy uh, do have a uh, more aggressive uh, prostate cancer. A biopsy series have shown that uh, Gleason 8 or higher cancer is found in 60%. We often see uh, aggressive infiltrative growth patterns. In some instances, the biopsies fail to demonstrate a radiation effect in the tissue. And in general, uh, as seen in uh, this slide demonstrating uh, pleomorphism and uh, an aggressive cellular subtype, uh, this is a, uh, in most cases, a more aggressive uh, prostate cancer. If we look at uh, data from 2017, looking at whole mount prostatectomy specimens after IMRT salvage prostatectomy, it further delineates the uh, difficulties in managing these patients. Uh, almost all had tumor at the apex, which in uh, HIFU salvage is a, a tricky area to manage. Uh, nearly half had tumor present in the most apical three millimeters of the prostate. And a significant percentage uh, had seminal vesicle involvement, 
which in uh, the opinion of many is actually a manifestation of systemic prostate cancer. And if we look at uh, some of the salvage prostatectomy data in uh, several uh, series that were reviewed by Scardino in 2011, uh, we see again that this is a sobering uh, subset of patients. Uh, depending on the series, a significant number had positive surgical margins. The uh, five-year biochemical disease-free survival uh, was uh, uh, certainly uh, quite good in some of the series, particularly as we were able to define uh, patients as only having local failure. And uh, so it, it certainly is a, a reasonable option, particularly in experienced surgical hands, but it is a procedure that carries with it significant morbidity, including stricture, rectal injury, uh, high rates of erectile dysfunction, as well as urinary incontinence. Uh, Dr. Steve Cianti uh, kind of had a summary uh, looking at several series that compared uh, erectile dysfunction uh, side effects from treatment, as well as uh, urinary incontinence side effects from treatment. And as we look at the available treatment options, we find that focal HIFU therapy, which in many cases is suitable for a radio recurrent prostate cancer, that we do uh, see quality of life preservation uh, in a high percentage. Uh, there has been a significant publication uh, looking at this subset of patients and management with HIFU. Uh, a large series uh, that was published in 2017 using European data showed that the five-year biochemical failure-free survival was 58% in lower-risk patients, uh, but dropped down to 36% in higher-risk patients. And uh, comparing this to the previous slide, this uh, compares somewhat reasonably with the salvage prostatectomy data, uh, but with significantly less uh, treatment-related morbidity, as summarized here in this slide. If we look at a large uh, trial done in North America, which had fairly strict endpoints, uh, we find that uh, the use of whole gland HIFU therapy and radio recurrent prostate cancer uh, did have a very significant uh, uh, response rates. We uh, looked at this group for two uh, endpoints that were primary endpoints, one being a PSA nadir of less than 0.5 or less uh, at 12 months and a negative biopsy rate at 12 months. And what we found in this group is that 81% had a negative 12 core biopsy uh, and that um, incontinence and ED rates uh, were acceptable. The incontinence uh, being defined as the use of any pads at all uh, being determined as severe incontinence, and this was only seen in 4% of patients. Erectile dysfunction was preserved in a significant percent of patients who were actually potent prior to therapy. Um, so in this uh, group of patients, the use of whole gland HIFU uh, did result in some treatment-related morbidity which were viewed as uh, significant uh, events. One was a 13% urethral stricture rate. And in 2%, uh, this was a complete bladder neck obliteration requiring multiple procedures uh, to restore urethral continuity. And uh, a rectourethral fistula rate of 5% in which two patients required uh, additional surgery with diverting colostomy. And this is in the series of uh, 100 patients. Again, uh, in patients who have had previous radiation therapy, uh, there are um, characteristics that put them at higher risk. 
uh, issues with the integrity of the rectal mucosa and muscularis, uh, as well as vascularity uh, of these structures. So uh, in recent years, those of us who are involved in HIFU therapy have turned our attention towards trying to define patients who can be treated focally uh, for radio recurrent uh, prostate cancer. And uh, this actually um, uh, is involving uh, several new criteria, primarily the use of uh, advanced imaging with multiparametric MRI, as well as the use of uh, fusion biopsy and in many instances, saturation biopsy to try to more uh, extensively uh, stage the patient with radio recurrent uh, disease. And we have found that we've been able to significantly reduce uh, the rates of urethral stricture uh, down to uh, a rate of approximately two to 4%. And in most cases and most series eliminate the risk of significant uh, rectal morbidity. So in one large series, uh, Dr. Emberton from Great Britain looked at 150 patients uh, who uh, were stratified uh, based on uh, low risk, intermediate and high risk, uh, primarily due to uh, tumor volume found at the time of saturation biopsy, as well as uh, an attempt to grade uh, the recurrent disease using Gleason scores, which is in and of itself sometimes a challenge. Uh, his patients actually had a, a higher pretreatment PSA than would be optimal. In my practice, uh, we have encouraged our partners to try to adapt uh, to the strict astro criteria defined in the radiation oncology literature uh, to describe a radiation failure as being three consecutive rises in PSA. So the dynamic has changed a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. We've tried to identify these patients earlier rather than later. Uh, and that seems to be a predictor of a successful outcome. So in Dr. Emberton's data, he did uh, achieve a 50% biochemical disease-free survival at a lengthy period of three years, <coughs> pardon me, and he was able to reduce his stricture rate to 8% and only a 2% fistula rate by using uh, focal HIFU as a salvage modality. Now, uh, in my own uh, personal experience, uh, we have treated uh, since 2015, 30 patients who have had um, uh, recurrent disease after primary therapy. Uh, the majority of the patients have been uh, IMRT patients. We also have a subset of patients who have had both radiation therapy and brachytherapy, and we have actually treated prostatectomy patients and actually HIFU salvage uh, in uh, a handful of patients as well. Uh, in our subset of patients, as you can see, uh, we took on um, all comers. There was a number of patients with significantly uh, elevated PSAs, uh, as well as uh, the more desired patients who fall into PSAs that are uh, much, much lower. The higher uh, PSA levels uh, were primarily uh, patients referred here uh, who had been evaluated and uh, who had been determined to uh, seemingly have failed uh, locally. And uh, we'll get into that subset of patients as we go along uh, a little bit further. Uh, we did see in the vast majority of patients very early, uh, excellent uh, PSA results, most, pa most patients significantly less than 0 0.4. Uh, we did have uh, three patients who uh, turned out to be minimal or non-responders uh, even early on. Those patients subsequently failed uh, primarily regionally in the lymph nodes 
and one patient failed uh, distantly with skeletal metastases. And in the majority of patients, our uh, results continued to endure uh, at least out to the 12-month uh, mark uh, in the majority of patients. And all patients except for one was able uh, or able to avoid androgen deprivation therapy uh, during the 12-month period of time uh, after salvage. If we look at our 12-month biochemical response, we had a median uh, PSA of 0 0.94 at 12 months. And um, we felt that in this subset of patients, uh, this certainly allowed for uh, these patients to resume ongoing surveillance without uh, androgen deprivation therapy or any other uh, systemic therapy. One of the tricky uh, parts of looking at this subset of patients in any of the published series is defining what a treatment failure uh, is. And this is an evolving uh, methodology. Uh, most of our data is still relatively short term. We are just beginning to see uh, five year uh, results coming out in the literature on this subset of patients. We also have to subdivide the patients based on the type of salvage therapy uh, that we're using. Uh, currently, uh, those of us involved in high food therapy strongly prefer to use uh, focal or hemiablative therapy uh, in salvage patients when that has been determined to be appropriate. Uh, we have found that the morbidity of the procedure in this particular group of patients is significantly less when HIFU can be applied as focal therapy or hemiablative therapy. It is also essential to incorporate uh, post salvage imaging using multiparametric MRI and also very importantly, incorporating axumin or fluciclovine scanning in both the pre-treatment as well as in the follow-up of these patients. I really can't emphasize that aspect uh, more strongly in terms of patient selection as well as in following uh, the progression. Uh, I have seen patients uh, who uh, were sent to me for HIFU salvage who had a, a normal standard workup with bone scan and CT imaging, but did end up showing uh, regional nodal disease when we applied fluciclovine or axomin scanning. And most recently, FDA, I think, has given approval to PSMA scanning, which I think is going to be tremendously helpful in how we manage these patients. Uh, in the uh, post salvage patients and those who were determined to have a uh, progression, 14% uh, were defined simply as biochemical failures. Uh, many of those patients with uh, imaging uh, have been able to maintain a surveillance protocol. 10% uh, have failed uh, locally as defined by a biopsy and an overall failure rate at 12 months, uh, combining these two groups of patients is about 25%, which is not um, uh, certainly uh, a stellar uh, endpoint. But as I, mentioned, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, in this subset of patients, one of my primary um, objectives is to avoid treatment morbidity, salvage treatment morbidity, and delay the implications of giving these patients uh, androgen deprivation therapy. Uh, our colleagues in England are also working on a uh, methodology for trying to determine which patients are most suitable for salvage therapy. And it combines uh, several important variables including their disease-free survival after their primary radiotherapy, their pre-salvage PSA level, their PSA doubling time, 
the prostate volume at the time of salvage, as well as information obtained through uh, MRI uh, imaging. And I think as we go forward, uh, we are going to look at models such as this in making uh, ultimately the decisions regarding the use of salvage therapy. Uh, well, this is actually an example of an Aximan scan done on a patient that was sent to me for consideration for salvage. Uh, PSA at the time of this uh, scan was, uh, I believe, about 2.5. And uh, Aximan scanning uh, demonstrated not only increased uptake in the right uh, hemisphere of the prostate, which was the site of the positive biopsies, but an unsuspected uh, pelvic lymph node, which subsequently was biopsied using CT guidance and turned out to be uh, nodal metastasis, and this patient went on to have uh, uh, androgen ablation therapy and I believe some additional radiation therapy to his lymph nodes. And this is very important because this method of a more provocative uh, PET scanning using markers like flucyclovine or PSMA uh, is really going to help with patient selection. And I really feel that some of the failures that the earlier uh, IMRT HIFU salvage patients had shown, including some in my series, uh, very likely may have had occult nodal metastasis that would have been uh, detected with this more advanced uh, imaging. And just for those of you who aren't familiar with HIFU, I wanted to show you uh, the uh, methodology quite briefly. It's not necessarily a HIFU uh, treatment uh, discussion, but just to give you an idea of how we plan treatment, this was a gentleman who had an anterior recurrence demonstrated in this MRI by an area of uh, increased uh, hyper enhancement demonstrated on the MRI, as well as aximan imaging uh, demonstrated uptake uh, more in the anterior prostate. And uh, what we did was we uh, planned a treatment, focal treatment to the anterior prostate. We utilized uh, the focal fusion software, which allowed us to uh, fuse his MRI image and the uh, area demonstrated on MRI, and then to create a surrounding one centimeter margin around the area uh, of positive biopsy. So we utilized uh, this advanced software incorporating uh, MRI. This was another patient who had a lateral uh, mid-gland recurrence, again demonstrated uh, with the uh, MRI uh, region of interest, a margin that I was able to create using our HIFU MRI fusion software. And this is actually a coronal image. Uh, we were able to extend our treatment uh, beyond the prostate, even to include uh, this patient's uh, left neurovascular bundle, which we've demonstrated uh, using Doppler enhancement, just lateral to the posterior lateral prostate. And then, as you can see on the right side, uh, this remaining bundle uh, was left uh, undisturbed. So in summary, I would like to say that it's very important to uh, give full assessment to this subset of patients. Uh, be very thorough with assessing uh, all of their voiding symptoms. Uh, these patients need uh, very extensive pretreatment evaluation. Uh, patients who have uh, a significantly abnormal rectal exam may not be ideal patients. Uh, the patient with a fixed rectal mass probably does not have uh, a local salvage situation. And we want to assess for any associated anal and rectal morbidities uh, which include, uh, in most instances, an up-to-date colonoscopy, as well as this uh, checklist 
of studies that are recommended prior to considering patients for salvage HIFU therapy. So in summary, uh, let me conclude by saying that uh, there are many patients uh, that will be present in all of our practices who will show um, relapse after radiation therapy. Uh, probably it may be as many as 20 to 25 patients treated with primary radiation therapy. A significant percentage of these patients may still have salvageable local uh, disease. And I think that if we uh, are cognizant of evaluating these patients early on, if they have uh, uh, an anticipated uh, significant life expectancy that is at least 10 years and their overall comorbidities are not uh, high, that it's uh, appropriate to look at evaluating these patients initially to define their disease as uh, precisely as possible, including MRI, including advanced PET imaging, uh, as well as um, the other studies listed here, and uh, give some consideration to uh, looking at high intensity focused ultrasound as a salvage option, which has the opportunity to uh, eradicate the local disease in significant cases, and if not, offer the patient an extended period of time where systemic therapy and hormonal therapy can be delayed or avoided for long-term. And I think in experienced hands, this procedure can be done with acceptable morbidity and I think is uh, suitable for an, a subset of patients that fall into this category. And I thank you for your attention.